Whether you're adding a new synth plugin or a vintage compressor, VSTs can be a big part of your music productions. So how do we add them to Traction Waveform Free or Pro? And how do we use them? Let's find out. So the first thing that you want to make sure is that the VST plugins that you download are 64-bit. And the plugin types that Traction Waveform can accept are VST or VST2 and VST3. So there's a few different ways to install plugins and it all depends on the installer that that particular plugin has. You may download a plugin that's in a zip file like this one here. And we'll just double click on that. And you can see there's another folder in there. Double click on it again. And we've got some files in here and another folder. Now, some instrument plugins will have this extra folder here. And some might just have the VST plugin. So you can see this one here is a VST3 plugin. And it says right there, VST3 plugin. And what we want to do with a VST3 plugin, you want to go to your main hard drive. For me, it's the C drive. And then we go to program files. Then you want to go to common files. And in here, you can see there's a VST3 folder. So what we can do with that one, we can copy this VST3 plugin file into that folder. But because this is an instrument that has this extra folder, we want to copy both of those. Or you can go back and copy this folder and paste it into your VST3 folder, which is here. And then that's it. There's no more installing. That's how you install a VST3 plugin. So now you've just installed a VST3 instrument plugin. Now, another way that you might get one is like this here, again, is going to be in a zip folder like that. We'll double click on it, open it up. And you can see this one has a VST3 and this is your VST2 or VST plugin here. It's a DLL file. So you can install both of these if you want a VST2 and a VST3, or you can install just one of them. It doesn't really matter. I recommend installing the VST3 because it is the latest technology, but typically the plugins will function the same either way. But if you get one that's just a DLL and not a VST3, you want to copy that one. And then instead of going to that common files VST3, we want to go to your main drive. And if you haven't installed any plugins yet, you won't have these folders. So you might need to create it, but you can see C program files. And then here we have VST plugins, all one word. If you don't have that, I recommend creating new folder in there and calling it VST plugins, all one word like that. And then in here, you could just paste that DLL file. And you can see I have other folders in here because it's going to read all your subfolders. So if you're somebody who likes to be very organized, you could organize these by instruments and effects. And C program files VST plugins is a typical default location when installing plugins through an installer. So this is a typical folder. Another typical folder could be and you want to watch this when you're installing plugins. You want to watch where it's going to install or change it. But another typical location is C program files, Steinberg VST plugins. You can see I have some in there as well. And you will look at that in just a bit, how you can have multiple locations. That's fine. If you want to have C program files, Steinberg VST plugins, and you want that other one, go for it. It doesn't matter. Or if you want some other location, it's up to you where you install them. I'm just showing you the default locations for most plugins. So we've installed a DLL file and a VST3 plugin. Let's look at another way that VST plugins might get installed on your computer. And that's through an installer. So you may download one and it's going to have an installer like this. We'll double click on it. And then you just want to go through the whole process here. You accept their little thing there. And you can see this one comes in a bunch of different formats. You have 32-bit, 64-bit VST2, 32-bit and 64-bit VST3, and 32-bit, 64-bit AAX. 
Now, AAX is for Pro Tools only. If you don't have Pro Tools and don't plan on using it, I would just leave that unchecked. And if you only want either the VST2 or the VST3, you could uncheck one of these and just leave whatever one you want. You can see I'm installing both the VST2, VST3, and the AAX. That's just my preference. Once you have your set, you click next, and this is where it shows you it's going to install it. So you can see by default, it's C program files, VST plugins. If you want, you can change that and you'd find whatever folder it is you want to install to. I would leave it at that. And then you would click next. It's going to install it and then it's done. So now we would have that plugin in our VST plugins folder. Now there's one more way that is becoming quite common now and that's through a plugin launcher. So a lot of companies are coming up with these plugin launchers and I'll show you one right now. So this one here is for native instruments. It's called native access. There's a bunch of them out there. IK multimedia has one waves plugins has one. There are a bunch of them out there and they're becoming more and more common. So I want to show you what you would do in this one. For example, is we can click on the little thing here, go to preferences. And then here you can see file locations and there's going to be a download location. So this is where it initially downloads it for the installation and then the application location, because some plugins need to be installed to their own folder. And that's just like all the plugin mechanics stuff. That's not the actual DLL or VST three. Then this one has content folder because there's a lot of instruments with native instruments and they require a lot of content. And that's all the sounds that they're going to load in. I have it set to install to a different hard drive altogether. So I'm not loading up my main hard drive. And then here you go. VST location. You can see by default, it's C program files, native instruments, VST plugins. If you want it to install to a different one, you would just click browse and change that. If you want the 32 bit ones, that's up to you. You can choose where to install that. And then you could just save once you have all your settings saved in there. So that's a plugin launcher program. A lot of people call these bloatware and that sort of thing. They take up very little space on your computer. So they're not really bloatware. If you're worried about the small size of this, you should probably get a larger hard drive anyway if you're creating music. So we just went through the process of installing plugins. So how do we get traction waveform to see them? Let's have a look. So what we'll want to do in waveform is go to settings. Then we go to file locations and we can see down here we have plugins. Now I have a bunch in there because I've added them. There are a couple that are in there by default. I can't remember what those ones are, but if you don't see whatever folder it is that you've installed plugins to, let's say it's the C program files, VST plugins. If you don't see that, just click on add path and then you would go and find C program files, VST plugins in here. You would click on it, select folder. And that's how you add a plugin location. And if you have multiple locations, you want to add that Steinberg VST plugins, you can do that. Native Instruments VST plugins, you can do that. And then down here, you have VST3 plugins. And you don't have to install them to C program files, common files, VST3. That's just the default location for all VST3 plugins. So I do recommend installing there because it is the default location but you can add other locations as well. So if this isn't there already by default, which I'm pretty sure it is, you would just add path and you would find that one there. And that's it for this part. Now we want to go to plugins over to the side here and you can go to scanning for plugins and you want to go to scan for new or updated VST plugins or scan for new or updated VST three plugins, whatever it is you installed, you would just do that and you would click on it. We'll do that now. And you can see in here, it's got two folders because that's all I had for VST three plugins. And if we needed to, we can add the folders in here as well. So you click scan. It's going to go through the entire process of scanning for all of these new plugins. And then when it's done, you may see some of these scan complete and then you'll have some errors. If you see those errors, typically what that means is you've installed a 32 bit plugin into a 64 bit plugin folder. 
If you don't see any of those, that's great. But you can just click OK and close it down. Now, that's kind of the older way of doing things is manually scanning for them. What I like about Traction Waveform is it has this option right here. Automatically check for newly added plugins. If you check that off, even with this program open, if I were to add a new plugin into any of my plugin folders, it's going to pop up and say new plugin found. Do you want to scan for it? You click scan. It adds it into your plugin list so you can access it right away. Now let's look at how do you use your plugins. All right, so I have a project open right now. Let's look at adding an instrument plugin. And there's a few ways that we can do that. We can click this little plus sign right here. This is probably the easiest way to do it. And you can scroll through all of your folders if you want. And you can find an instrument in here. Let's do that quick. What do I have in here? Let's add this one in there. There we go. We have this hybrid three in here. So this is an instrument plugin. And this one has some presets that we could scroll through. So if I wanted a soft pad, I can go in here, click on that. And also if you open up this bottom menu, you can see in here there's some presets as well. It's not as intuitive as up there, but some plugins don't have their own plugin manager built in. So you may need to access presets down here. And of course you can save presets down there as well if that's what you want to do. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard connected and you want to hear what this sounds like, we can put a little MIDI clip on that track, open up the MIDI clip and then play some notes. And of course you can draw in your notes if you need to. So that is a VST instrument plugin. Now let's look at adding an effect plugin. Now, one thing you're going to want to make sure is if you're using an instrument plugin, you want it to be the furthest to the left. So if you have any effects plugins on here, you don't want them to be in front of the instrument. So let's just look at that now for adding an effect. Again, we can do the same thing, plus sign, and then you go through here, find the effect that you want. So you can add an effect now because the effect is on this side of the instrument. Let's see if it will play. You can't hear the instrument at all because we have the effect in front of it. And this effect doesn't have MIDI pass through and having a compressor in front of the thing that's making the noise isn't going to do anything anyways. Another way that we can add a plugin is to just right click on a plugin that's already in there. So if we right click on that, you can see add plugin to left. And again, it's going to bring up this little menu here and you can add whatever plugin you want. I like this recent list here because it shows you what you've recently used. Again, because it adds it to the left, we're not going to have any sounds. So we want to click and drag and bring it after our instrument. There we go. We've added an effect that way. And there's another way that we can add a plugin, which is kind of cool. You see this gray plus sign here. If you right click on that, it brings up this cool list that shows you some of the graphic user interfaces for the plugins. And it takes a while to load them all. So if you have a lot, it's going to take a while to load them all. But usually it keeps the most recent ones at the top. And you can just easily click and drag wherever you want to add it. So I'll just drag it to there. And we've just added a plugin to that track now. You can keep adding more and more effects to your tracks, however many you need, and you can drag them around in here, whatever order you want them to come in. Now, another way that we can look at the mixer is by clicking on that eye, and then you can see this line here, and you have your mixer there. So of course you can go in here, click on the plus sign, and again, you can find your plugin. Another thing I should mention is that you could easily search for your plugins as well. Now there's four main ways that you can work with MIDI in Traction Waveform and to find out how, click the video on the screen. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump.
thumbs up.